Um, on, the, on the far end, again, to the spectrum, we have terrestrial laser scanning. I think Chad touched upon this. Um, the basics of it, you've got a scanner, and sometimes you've got a camera embedded with it. Um, you then, there's a, a measurement is taken by emitting a, a beam of light from the laser and recording the, either the phase of which it comes back or the amount of time it takes to come back. Uh, by spinning it, you get 180 degrees uh, uh, me of measurements from it, and then by spinning the whole thing around, you get a whole sphere. Again, distinct, well, well so distinct from, uh, or actually related to, to photogrammetry, uh, one view doesn't get it. Um, there are, uh, you get a lot from one view, but there are occlusions, so for me to capture everything, I have to move this scanner around. Um, and uh, historically, we've used things like targets um, to type these individual points and stitch them together, reference them together in the same coordinate frame. Uh, Autodesk, we've, we've taken some strides to remove these targets from the workflow. I'm sure we'll be showing casing that a little bit later today. Um, but, uh, but from this, you create a point cloud, which is distinct uh, from a mesh representation, a surf rep surface representation. Um, there, there, we're investigating techniques right now that um, will take points and create 3D mesh from them, but uh, by no means is this um, an easy thing to do or something that we will be doing thing anytime in the near future, but it's definitely technology that we're looking into. Going from, from those which are more static into mobile, um, you've got uh, systems that are able to um, incorporate kinematics and movement while scanning. Uh, the, more, the more common that you see are those that are captured from airborne uh, or from the roadway. But like, like all things that we're starting to see emerge, there's a whole variety of new innovative products coming out uh, to do capture. One of my favorites, uh, actually a, a friend of mine, um, went and this is uh, called Zeb, the Zebedee from Australia. Let me show how many of you have seen this. Uh, uh, when he showed me this the first time, I, I laughed. Um, you'll see why in a minute. Um, but it illustrates really well sort of the basic principles of how kinematic scanning works, right? So there it is. That's right. It's a device that flops around on a screen. Uh, I told him that uh, the concept is cool, the results are, are awesome, but, uh, you know, the, you've got to be a real, you know, have a lot of ego, a lot of bold to walk around with that thing, especially on a construction site. Um, but as you see here, what is happening is uh, it's all based off of trajectory. I know, see, that's not, to me it's amazing you can walk downstairs and 3D model, that's amazing, but at the same time it's a flop in your hand scanner. Um, but you see what's happening is a trajectory. It's a continuous movement. And the, all the algorithm, the software that go into making this model work uh, getting this, this point cloud is based off of making sure that that path follows exactly the way that the scanner uh, moved around. Uh, but from that, just w at walking pace, up, down stairwells, multiple floors, outdoors, indoors, I mean, this is quite remarkable from a handheld device. Density is a little bit lower. I mean, you're not going to get the accuracy that would get up terrestrial, but still, the innovations that are coming up uh, are, are fantastic. I just can't. I told him if he put it on his on a helmet, yeah. that maybe at least it kind of with a, like a beanie, like <laughs> yeah. I, but uh, but again, it's it's again phenomenal, phenomenal technology. Um, so a lot of interesting things happening in the capture domain. Um, so another another one, while not quite purely mobile. Um, it is still using static, but it's from a, a mobile platform is the drone. Now, I'll tell you that my background uh, is robotics. Um, I talked about the Google car earlier because those are all my associates, people I went to school with who are working on the car. So I've been in robotics for a while. Uh, drones are something of, of interest to me. For a while, even in research, we recognized it as something experimental, something fun to play with you know, a concept for the future. But I'll tell you that, uh, you know, the biggest skeptic in the world being me, I'm really starting to see uh, drones come into their own. Um, so here's what's happening. All that discussion I mentioned about walking around an object, you know, to capture it, 
you can actually do it at a much larger scale with the drone. So uh, I'm not sure how many have seen this video before. Uh, it's one, one we've been showing for a while. But um, uh, you take a drone, you take a, a, a camera, uh, and you're able to uh, circumnavigate, fly around a building. Uh, you'll see here all the calculated poses. It doesn't use anything else. There's no GPS and nothing else that we, we use currently. We are looking to uh, exploit that. But you're able to get a really phenomenal 3D representation um, from just doing a quick flyover. I actually brought uh, one example of a drone today. I believe PJ with the uh, RV brought another one. And weather permitting, we'll definitely try and do this uh, today to give you a sense of how it works. But uh, it's uh, really for, for the time it takes to collect this, the cost of the setup in the system, um, it is, it is a, it's a remarkable uh, capture tool. Um, the process, real quickly, going from you know, um, you know, physical world into the digital and back out, um, again, within the Autodesk, although it's not exclusive to Autodesk, um, the, uh, you, know, you take pictures, we have uh, recap, um, we'll be talking about this later in terms of uh, taking these photos in and creating that 3D model. And then from there, you can bring them into any number of the HERO products uh, in that form to lay out, to augment, to edit, um, to get sort of a quick and dirty representation of an as-built condition. Um, and uh, we also have a few, a new workflow that's coming out. Uh, there's a labs preview of, a, of something we call Project Memento. It is our sort of desktop editing tool for these, uh, for these photo reconstructions. And it's also being integrated with 3D printers. So you can fly around, capture, and print your, uh, whatever you, uh, you want to capture. Um, here's another example. This was a little more high end. Oh, sound. So you'll notice that this is, uh, I believe this is called octocopter. So instead of four, C8, a uh, little more high end, but able to carry a heavier payload, a little nicer camera. And with that, you can capture even bigger uh, objects. So you see here, uh, capturing uh, the stadium, manipulating around, walking around. To give you a sense of what these cost, if you're curious, um, sort of in the toy industry, they're sub $100, but those really aren't going to get you uh, with the camera. The one that I've brought with me here, um, which I've uh, done a number of uh, pilot jobs with, um, is uh, manufactured by DJI, the Phantom 2, uh, and it works with the GoPro, so that's about, again, around $1,000. Uh, beyond that, I believe the one PJ brought um, is more of a consumer version, um, kind of one to five, also works with the GoPro, uh, and then from there they get uh, more complicated. And then you'll also, if, you, uh, if you're interested in this, keep your eye out. There's a number of companies coming out with really full package solutions that uh, you, uh, for example, we'll cover the last one, the, the Super Pro from Skytech. Um, the idea here is that it, it would be great if you could continuously track the uh, progress on a construction site. Uh, but doing that with laser scanners um, can be a little tedious. So by uh, you know, having an, an aerial uh, site, um, uh, specifying a path, um, that these drones can continuously fly this. In fact, uh, the model that you see here uh, is constructed from a uh, you know, pre-programmed flight, uh, flight path um, of an aerial drone um, and uh, color-coded by elevation uh, so that you get to see uh, what's there, but more importantly, you can diff that and detect what's changed from um, path to path. Uh, in addition to that, not only tracking changes, but you can do things like um, volumetric. Um, I, uh, another thing about me, I'm actually from West Virginia, um, so I know a little bit about coal mining. Uh, stockpiles, um, they, uh, that's how they live and die, by the volumes of their stockpiles. Air, they require aerial surveys to track uh, and, you know, how much is coming in, how they're taxed, and what revenue is based off of. And these aerial surveys are expensive and at the whim of weather conditions, whereas with drones, that really changes. Um, so um, 
but anyway, you can get relatively accurate uh, volumetric calculations by just using this method. So for those of you interested, here are some websites um, that you can go to to, to test this out. Um, again, I'll, weather permitting, be flying a drone, maybe somebody will actually look at some flight images. Um, and if you have any questions uh, about this, or again, you'll see presentations about recap. I'm the guy to talk to, so I'll be here through 5 o'clock. So we'll uh, wrap it up. So with that, um, I'll actually I'll pause. Any questions? I'm kind of quiet here. Also, we, if you're curious about the demo mode, we have uh, the actual uh, what is it, the forms, they call them, uh, over on the table for you to look at and see what you like. No jello. <laughs>